Don Glucker with Cal OES, and he's going to be talking about the Disaster Service Worker Program. Thank you very much, Cindy. Good morning, everyone. My name is Don Gluckert. I am the lead on the uh, Cal OES Disaster Service Worker Volunteer Program. Welcome. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is uh, just briefly uh, in this slide presentation is what this program is about. And primarily what we do is provide program guidance and program benefits. And those benefits are purely workers' compensation benefits to injured disaster service worker volunteers throughout the state of California. There are about 50,000 volunteers throughout California who step forward during disasters, emergencies, and even for trainings. Some of them get injured, and if they do, they um, are eligible to apply for workers' compensation benefits. Uh, this program also provides limited liability protection in addition to the Good Sam laws and other uh, protections afforded by local statutes and, and federal statutes. So Cal OES, through the um, California Emergency Services Act, uh, is charged with uh, approving disaster council accreditations and regulations. All 58 counties in over 600 cities and authorized um, designees such as sheriff's departments and fire districts uh, are authorized to register, train, and deploy va volunteers to disasters. Uh, we also manage the appropriation, which is granted to us by the state legislature on an annual basis. All of the claims for injuries uh, come across our desk here. It's reviewed and then we partner with um, our insurance risk management agency, which is State Compensation Insurance Fund. Uh, also, we provide educational outreach, such, such as this seminar right now. So as I said, the state legislature approves a budget for us annually. It comes out of the state's general fund, and from that money, we pay workers' compensation claims. Uh, state fund, uh, also known as SCIF, they process the claim, calculate benefits, and we talk to them every day. Who can be volunteers? Well, in, in this case, um, typically volunteers are registered with the SAP or Safety Assessment Program, uh, which is a unit of Cal OES. We also have Civil Air Patrol and a Communications Reserve here. But as I said, every county and nearly every city has uh, jurisdictional uh, providence to be able to register volunteers. Who can be a volunteer? People who are physically and mentally capable of performing the services. Um, we do not require backgrounds, background checks, but at a local level, they may be, re may be required. Uh, people can be employed, unemployed, retired, semi-retired. Even non-citizens in California can be disaster service worker volunteers. And it says there in the slide, NB, Nota Bene, Oath subscription. Some people may have a conflict if they are citizens of another country and they swear the oath to the Constitution of the United States and the California Constitution. It may conflict with their own citizenship, so they have to be aware of that. Um, in California, minors, which is anyone under 18, can also be volunteers provided their parent or legal guardian uh, gives their written consent. Um, the ADCs, Accredited Disaster Councils, they make the decision as to who to use as uh, volunteers in each specific case. So a volunteer has to be registered with, with a, an accredited disaster council or an authorized designee, such as the Sheriff's Department for Search and Rescue or in uh, fire departments, fire districts for CERT teams, or they're registered underneath one of the other Cal OES um, uh, units that I mentioned earlier. They don't get paid at all. That's what a volunteer means. Uh, they can be fed, but they can't be paid. Uh, they're activated by a registering agency. They can't just show up and start helping. Um, they could be impressed into service at, at a disaster, 
a fire chief could ask someone, could you help fill sandbags? And then we're going to sign you up afterwards. That's acceptable. And then um, we also include auxiliary firefighters because they are unpaid. The activities that are eligible, as you can see here on the list, um, proclaimed emergencies. Uh, the governor proclaims local authorities proclaim emergencies, local emergencies, but the president declares an emergency. Um, search and rescue missions are probably the biggest activity that we have. Um, activities to mitigate imminent threats, something that's right upon us, not like, well, it, it, we could have fires next year, so we're gonna clear these forests with volunteers. That is not an eligible activity. Uh, Excluded activities or day to day, you know, a local fire or, or crowd control at concerts or helping uh, at a first aid booth at a concert. That's that's not the disaster. So it's not included in here. Um, educational fairs, no. Public safety power shutoffs, um, no, that's not included at all. Uh, as I said earlier, self-activation, where people just say, doggone it, I'm going to go help. Uh, you can, but if you're injured, you cannot apply for workers' comp benefits under this program. And also, um, travel to and from a training site. Uh, if someone is injured while traveling, traveling to or from a training site, that's excluded. But if it was travel to and from a disaster, that is included as an eligible activity for workers' compensation benefits. So volunteers must be registered. And there, there is a form. We have a form, but uh, other entities use their own forms. There are 13 approved classifications in uh, for disaster service workers. A person can be registered on the same form under more than one heading. Um, we have to have the date they enrolled, which was when they signed the loyalty oath. Uh, the loyalty oath must be subscribed to. If a person cannot subscribe to the loyalty oath because of religious or personal beliefs, then they cannot be a disaster service worker volunteer under this program. Um, and then also the name of the registering agency, county, city, must also be on there. They have to be actively activated or deployed um, now, that doesn't mean they have to get a phone call. They could already have an SOP or in their emergency operation plan guidelines that says if all communication is knocked out, you know, let's meet in the Safeway parking lot and then you'll get your marching orders from there. That's acceptable. Um, or they could hear it over radio announcements or get a, uh, a cell phone call from their supervisor. But they must be activated. Um, if a volunteer is injured, there's specific documents that um, we must receive here in the office. And there are uh, two claim forms that are from SCIF, um, a copy of their registration form, which also includes their, their loyalty oath subscription, and then a, a written incident by the supervisor, by the supervisor, not by the injured person. What happened, who, what, where, when, why, that sort of thing. And if it was due to a training, um, we need to have the written pre-authorization for that training and also a copy of the sign-in sheet. Just as an aside, California is the only state in, the, in this nation that offers this kind of a program. When I was talking to Washington State several months ago, I asked, well, how do you compensate? And they said, we hate to tell you this, but uh, typically volunteers, if injured, need to sue us for reimbursement for their medical claims. So. California is extremely generous, and this has been going on since World War II. So this is a screenshot of the Disaster Service Worker Volunteer Program webpage. It's on the caloes.ca.gov website. Um, the program documents are the first section there. Number two is the guidance book. It's a 99-page booklet, um, pretty much in depth, talks about this program how to complete the forms, how to uh, send uh, the claim forms in. 
And then the registration form in English and Spanish is there as well. And the uh, frequently asked questions is really awesome. If any of you knew my predecessor, predecessor Anita Champ, she wrote this and the woman was brilliant. Also the uh, claim forms, which are down below number three and four, those are provided by SCIF. So if, if you are a supervisor and you had a volunteer who was injured, this is where you would collect those forms. So that's it for my presentation, very abbreviated. Uh, my, my name is Don Gluckert. My supervisor is Hilda Vargas. So if I'm not in, you could call Hilda, but I'm gonna tell you 99% of the time, Hilda's gonna say, hey, Don will be back tomorrow. Can you call him? So I'm happy to help at any time. If you ever have any questions, please feel free to give me a call or send me an email. The link to that uh, guidance page is there at the very bottom, but you can also contact me and I'll help you out with it. If you have any questions, I'll be on at the end. Thank you so much.